even though we're on these digital platforms and listen to God speaking to us in a special way. I want to greet all those who are watching us from our YouTube channel and our Facebook ch channel from South Zimbabwe Conference and from all the four corners of this earth. It is such a privilege in this camp meeting season that we can come, take some time and listen to the Holy Spirit ministering to us in a special way. I want us to speak from the book of Jeremiah Today, Jeremiah chapter 3, and our message is entitled, Come Back, My Wife. Come Back, My Wife. Let's bow our heads as we pray this uh, day. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for yet another privilege that you have bestowed upon us. Father, we are so grateful to know that even in the midst of this turmoil, in the midst of this perplexity, you still take time to speak to us. Heavenly Father, we run the risk of not pausing long enough to hear you speaking to us. And so it is in these times that we ask that may you imbue us with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Even as we open your word today, 
May we receive a measure of the Holy Spirit that our lives may be transformed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One of the greatest object lessons that, that we find in biblical writings is the concept of marriage. The Bible tells us that after God had created the heavens and the earth, on the sixth day, the Bible tells us that God creates man and calls him Adam. And God also creates Eve. And Genesis chapter 5 reminds us that when God created Adam and Eve, he called them mankind. And we find that in the Garden of Eden, Adam is by himself and he is given an helpmeet. But even after the fall, even after man had moved from the principles of God, the concept of marriage is now used to express a higher truth and a greater responsibility, which is the relationship between Christ and his church, the relationship between God and his church. When God institutes the object lesson for, uh, uh, for the worship of Israel, when, when God institutes the sanctuary as the center of the Jewish worship system and the Jewish economy, Israel, through successive years of rebellion, moves from these ideal principles, these divine principles that God had instituted for his government on earth. And Israel becomes enchanted with the idea of moving from a theocracy where God is king and lord and moving to the state of monarchy where human kings are instituted. And it is from those times that we begin to see in a very deep sense the fall of Israel. Israel gravitates away from the oracles, from the principles, from the judgments, and from the statutes of God. And Israel begins to take the tone and the similitude of the nations around it. I recall when uh, Israel demanded that they have a king as the other nations. Samuel received this message with consternation and, and he received it with a lot of anger. Until God had to tell him that they have not rejected you, Samuel, but they have rejected me. I want to suggest to us and remind us, beloved saints, that when God took Israel out of Egypt, his intention was to establish a nation on earth that would live according to the principles of God. It is a dangerous thing. When the children of God move away from the set and the revealed standards of God's character. And when they gra gravitate towards the world. The Bible then reveals to us that after successive years of rebellion. After successive years of idolatry. God begins to send his mouthpieces. The prophets of Israel, from Je Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, down to uh, Amos, Hosea, all these prophets had one, one task that was to reveal the will of God and to bring Israel back to, to God. So we find that Jeremiah, one of the major prophets, writes, in Jeremiah chapter 3, and he says to us, They say if a man divorces his wife, and she goes from him, and, become an, an, and becomes an, another man's, may he return to her again? Would not that land be greatly polluted? But you have played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return to me, says the Lord. Will the church say, Amen out there. I want to take the example of the prophet Hosea. The lesson or the message of Hosea is a direct message to Israel. That Hosea represents uh, God and the love that he has for Israel. Goma, his wife, represents rebellious Israel.
Israel, who lies or who plays the harlot with many lovers. Now, I want to cl clarify something there. The concept of adultery within the book of Hosea is reminding us that when we as the children of God find pleasure in receiving marching orders from other gods, when we find ourselves moving away from God who is our husband, from Christ who is our husband, when we find ourselves moving away from God and making altars where we worship foreign gods, where we worship other deities, that action within the Old Testament context, that action is defined as adultery or harlotry. And so we find that Goma, after Hosea makes concerted efforts to bring his wife back, she continues to go and play the harlot with other men. She continues to go and play the harlot with other gods. And God is saying to his church, God is saying to his people, come back. And so it is within uh, 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 the context of Je Je Jeremiah chapter 3 that the Bible says to us here that if a man divorces his wife and she comes back to him after she has been married to another man, if he takes her back again, will that land not be polluted? And yet God says, return to me, says the, the Lord, return to me. Even though you have played the harlot, even though you have worshipped other gods, even though you have found pleasure in fulfilling the marching orders and obeying the mandate of other gods. God declares, come back to me. And when you read uh, uh, in Jeremiah chapter 3, from verse 6, in my Bible it is entitled, A Call to Repentance. Remember our theme is, I will go. And the question we want to answer to today is, how can we go when we are married to another man? Hence, the title of the message, Come Back my wife. This is a call to all those who feel they have backslidden. This is a call to all those who feel that they have moved from the principles of God. God today is calling us back and God is saying, I know what you have done. You have, you have left me. You left me heartbroken. You left me alone. But because my love goes beyond your actions, my love goes beyond your attitudes, my love is deeper than any rebellion that you can ever conceive in your mind. God is saying, return to me. I know you have pre play, played the harlot. And we will unpack that as we continue in our message. So in verse 6 of Jeremiah chapter 3, the, the Bible says to us, the Lord said also to me in the days of Josiah the king, Have you seen what backsliding Israel has done? She has gone up on every high mountain and under every green tree and played the harlot there. What is the Bible saying to us? Somewhere in the Holy Scriptures, the Bible reminds us that the children of Israel would search for stones and carve out gods for themselves. The children of Israel would look for trees and carve out gods for, for themselves. And the psalmist then says to, to, to them, uh, the, the psalmist then says to us, those who worship these gods are like them, for they have ears, but they can't hear. They have eyes, but they can't see. They have limbs, but these limbs can't move. And so God is saying to his wife, you have gone up to every high mountain and you have gone under every green tree and there you have played the harlot. God is saying in the, in, 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 in the mountain groves and under the, the trees you have a reputation of harlotry, 
All the foreign gods know you. All these gods and these deities, all these false systems of worship know your reputation. What is your reputation? You are a harlot. And God is saying that to think that I took you out of Egypt with a great and marvelous hand. And I brought you Exodus chapter uh, 19. God says, you saw what I did to you and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Now, I want to imagine that a husband has his wife and the husband uh, pays uh, the lolo wola and he pays the, the bride price and he goes and he's given his wife. And his wife makes a decision to go and play to the harlot. I want to imagine the pain that that husband must go, go through. I want to imagine uh, the, 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 the deep feelings of betrayal that that husband must go through. And in this context, we seem to understand a glimpse of the emotions of God. That God is pained by the very wife. That he took out of bondage. The very wife that he redeemed by his mighty hand. By his power from the hold of the Egyptians. And in verse 7, the Bible says to us, And I say, after she had done all these things, return to me. But she did not return. And her treacherous sister saw it. Her treacherous sister Judah saw it. The Bible is suggesting to us here and the Bible is declaring that this husband gave his wife an open invitation to come back. This husband was willing to forgive his wife. He looked at all the actions that she had done. He looked at all the betrayals. He looked at all the sleepless nights he spent burning his pillows. With his tears, this husband looked and he looked at how his wife was so helpless, bound and jailed by the, her very desire to play the halot. And I want to ask a question, even to those who are watching. You recall that I mentioned earlier that this message is for those who have backslidden. Those who have moved away from the faith of their fathers. Those who have moved away from the very things that they believed from the time they were two children. From the very things that they held on to from the time that they could remember to count from one to, to ten. From the time they could comprehend as the preacher was preaching. Do you recall from when or from whence thou hast fallen? And who are these gods? Who are these gods that we have played the harlot with? Number one, many of us have played the harlot with the god of money. Mammon, the god of money. Many people have left the faith simply because they cannot let go of the idea of making money. And I want to suggest to us that money can put us in a sense of invincibility. That the whole world is at our disposal. At the click of a finger, we can have things done for us simply because we are persons of influence. Because of the amount of wealth that we have. And some have played the harlot with money. If you are listening to me and you are watching... I want to suggest to you that you need to come back to your husband who is Jesus. You have gone in the highways and the byways. You have gone to the mountain tops. You have gone under the, the trees. You have gone to the valleys. And there you have played the harlot. And you know that where you are standing is not where God wants you to be. You and I know, and you know in the depth of your heart, that God knows the condition of your heart. The Bible tells us that a young man <clears throat> came to Jesus one day. And he poses a question to Jesus and he says, what 
must I do to be saved? And Jesus says, obey the law. And the young man says, from the time I was a youth, I have obeyed the law up to now. Then Jesus turns to him and says, go and sell all that you have and give to the poor. The Bible says to us, when the young man heard these words, these saving words, these redemptive words, he moved from Jesus with a very sad face. Jesus then declares, as difficult as it is, or it's easier for a camel to enter through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to be saved. I want to suggest that if you are listening to me, who is your God today? It might be night, not, it, it might be night time or morning or afternoon as you hear this message. Here's a question. Who are you playing the harlot with? Money. And it, and it also reminds us how the preacher says, money answereth all things. Maybe for you, your God is pride. Number two, maybe your God is pride. You have played the Halloween and, 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 and you know what, friends? One of the most difficult, difficult sins to decipher is the sin of pride. Some people pride themselves in their humility. They are humble in their pride and prideful in their humility. And I want to suggest to us that many of us have had the spirit even of the evil one. What caused Lucifer to fall from heaven was not money because he was in the very presence of the abundance of God. So abundance was not his issue. What caused him to fall from heaven was not food because food was in abundance. It wasn't shelter. I believe that shelter was there in abundance. But the one thing that he could not possess was to be counted equal with God. And in his heart, pride sprang up. Ezekiel says of Lucifer that your organs or your pipes were created in you from the day you were created. He was the covering cher cherubim, full of beauty. The, 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 the adoration of heavenly hosts, the praise of angels, and in his heart, began to spring pride. Now, what pride does, it goes beyond the here and now, and it seeks for something greater than what it already has. And in his mind, according to Isaiah, he begins to say, I will set up my throne above the throne of God. I will ascend into the heavens. I want to be there where God has not put me pride cometh before destruction and the haughty spirit before a fall. And you're listening to me. One of the greatest challenges about pride is that it is difficult to discern even for the one who possesses it. So many people may come and tell you that you need to be humble. Many people may come and tell you that you need a transformation. But because pride eclipses your ability to decipher and to discern that you possess this sin, you become antagonistic to those who are on your side, those who want to help you, and for some reason, you begin a witch hunt to determine that who is it that is hating and conspiring against me. That is what pride does. And I want to suggest to you that when you have the sin of pride, the God of pride, you are much like Lucifer himself. What is it? Where have you played the harlot? But Jesus and God today are saying, I don't mind what you have done. I know what you have done. I don't mind what you have done. What I want is you. I want you to come back. You are my wife. You have a, you have a price and a value that, that resonates with me. I want you to come back. What I have placed in you is more valuable than the very thing that you have disobeyed me by. 
What is your God to today? What is your God? Is it money? Is it pride? Is it, the, is it power? For some people, it is power. One of the greatest things that I have failed to un un understand is that sometimes even in church leadership, even at the lo local church, people will fight for eldership. One person, when he finally came into eldership, was literally flabbergasted to know and to come to the realization that uh, there was no payment and, and, and he could not contain himself. And he said, for all the years that I have been an Adventist, I thought that all the bickering and fighting that takes place during church elections is because there is a financial benefit. And he says, I am literally disappointed to think that people fight for positions, not because of any monetary benefit, but because of power. That ability to influence for one year or for two years, that ability to stand and give announcements and be able to say that what I'm thinking is what people must follow. There is a spirit in power that needs to be tamed. Power. What is your God? What is your God? Who have you played the harlot with? And even in these times of COVID-19, the question still comes to us as believers. Who is your God? But I want to suggest to us that our God in heaven is merciful. In Ezekiel, God says to us, I have no desire that anyone should perish but my desire is that everyone should come to repentance. And God today is saying to us, you are my wife. I know what you have done. I know you have sinned against me. I know you have offended me. I know you have left my principles. I know you love being where you are. But look at the greater picture. I want you to come back. This is for the backslidden. Maybe you have left the, the church. Not only have you left the church, but some people have backslidden while they are in the church. So they may be holding hymn books and Bibles and preaching even in the pulpits, but they have since rebelled from God. They have left God. They are no longer interested in God. Some will tell you there is no longer a heaven that I aspire to enter into. Why? Because if God is such a God of love. Why does he allow suffering? Why has he allowed my mother to, to, to die? And for some of you, you have been affected by COVID-19. You have prayed to God. You have taken these natural remedies. You have taken uh, the, the, the medical remedies only to discover that after such a long battle, after all the resources, your loved one has rested. And you ask God, what kind of a God allows me to go through this? And you have decided to leave the, the flock, to leave God, to abandon everything you have ever believed, all your convictions, simply because of an isolated instance. And today God is saying to you, come back. Come back, my wife. I know what you have done. Some of us have suffered from the burden of secret sins, sins that only God knows. We don't require you to come and tell everyone what you have done. But God is saying to you, come. God today is calling us to repentance. Now I want to close with verse 12. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and the south. This is God speaking to Jeremiah. And he says, return backsliding Israel, says the Lord. I will not cause my anger to fall on you, for I am merciful, says the, the, the Lord. I will not remain angry forever. Verse 13, only acknowledge your iniquity that you have transgressed against the Lord your God and have scattered your charms to alien deities under every green tree and you have not obeyed my voice says the Lord. Return, O backsliding children, says the Lord, for I am married to you. I will take you, one from a city, two from a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Come back. Return to me. 
What a call from a loving father. What a call from a loving husband. Jesus is saying to us, God is saying to us, today, return, come back. I know what you have done. When God says, come, he's saying, I know the risk I am taking. I know all that you have done. I've watched you. Even as you were breathing in those times you were rebellious, I possessed the, the power to your life. I watched you. I observed you. But now I've seen that you're sinning and your hollow tree has wasted you. But come back. These gods whom you love so much, the best they can do for you is to waste you, to finish your energies, to finish your virtue. Come back. I want to pray for someone to today. I want to pray for someone who feels that I've wandered far away from God. I've been to, to this place. I've been to the Sangomas. I've been to that, that place. But God, now I'm coming home. I'm tired. I'm tired. I've come to, to, to church, but I've looked for G G Jesus. But I want to suggest to us that Jesus is not found in the structure of the church. Jesus is not found in the buildings, but Jesus is found in the community that takes the written word seriously and declares that we will worship him even though the heavens may, may fall. And if you want to join with me in, in that prayer, bow your heads with me as we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for yet another privilege that you have bestowed upon us. Father, we have played the hallowed with many gods on mountaintops, under green trees, in places that even angels dare not tread. But still the call of the ages comes through. From your very mouth, come back. Father, give us the strength like the prodigal son to come to the point of realizing that we are far from God and we want to come back. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I pray for that brother, that sister, that mother, that, that father, that young person that feels they've wandered and strayed too far away from your grace. Bring them back to your fold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. May God bless you. May God be with you. Amen.